Good happy Tuesday evening, July 5th, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Tuesday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First up, applications open Monday for 100M fund to boost New Hampshire's affordable housing. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Once America made the chips that power the world, but bad decisions in Washington drove our cars up plane. It's the story state officials say they keep hearing from Granite State businesses. When you talk to businesses, the biggest issue they come back with all the time is housing. If it's difficult for a new medical resident to accept his residency at an area hospital because they can't find housing they can afford, you can imagine what it's like for a single parent with a couple of kids. At a level, they say now, that requires state intervention. It is, as the governor pointed out, at a point where employers are not able to recruit and retain a lot of their key employees because those employees cannot find an adequate place to live. The plan is Invest NH, $100 million focused on multifamily workforce housing. $60 million will be going to capital grants to help developers with the costs that are keeping them from building more. All of this going to developers to help uh, cover some of their costs, their gaps in funding, whether it's because of the massive amounts of uh, inflationary costs that folks are dealing with today. Grants for projects that officials say should hit the market within 18 months. And they say it's not just for mega apartment buildings. Uh, that Victorian on Main Street that is maybe going from a single family operation to uh, just the three, four, five units. The rest of the money is to help cities and towns. $30 million to help them issue permits within six months. $5 million to help fix zoning rules that lead to a lack of affordable housing. And $5 million to demolish vacant buildings. The benefit of this program doesn't just put thousands of new units onto the market. It puts it onto the market very, very quickly. Uh, and it puts it all across the state. And now part of that speed is the fact that the plan won't be happening in phases. Instead, all of the money will now be available all at once. Applications for developers are going live on Monday. The state created a website for that. We put a link for you tonight on uh, the WMUR website and also on our mobile app. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Man arrested after leaving kids unattended in car with weapons, Manchester police say. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Once America made the chips that power the world, but bad decisions in Washington drove our cars Well, Jamie, Manchester police arrested that man in this Walmart parking lot just yesterday evening, now Manchester police tell us they took 27-year-old Tyler Kennedy into custody after speaking with witnesses in the parking lot who say he left a 9-year-old, a 1-year-old, and an 8-month-old baby unattended in the car with the windows up while he was inside the store for more than 20 minutes. Police then later found a loaded gun and a knife inside of a backpack in that car that was within reach of those children. So if anybody does see children inside a car left unattended um, at any time of the year, it's definitely something that police should be alerted to because children that age should not be left alone. And again, coupled with the situation here where we had a loaded gun as well as a knife inside the car, that could become a very dangerous situation. And we're glad that somebody made a phone call and got the police there when they did. And Kennedy was taken into custody. He's now been charged with three counts of endangering the welfare of a child. He was released on bond and is due back in court in August. We're live in Manchester tonight. Scott Cook, WMUR, and he's not. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. No one injured in early morning fire at Hampton Beach Inn. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Once America made the chips that power the world, but bad decisions in Washington drove our cars up like... 
This video shows the smoke coming from the roof of the ships in, in Hampton Beach. Eight-year-old Luani Dos Passos describes her experience. It was kind of scary and loud. The fire was reported around 6 a.m. Tyler Berry was staying in one of the rooms. I woke up to this, the fire alarm. I didn't really know what it was at first, so me and my aunt got up. We just ran up and down the hallway. We got everybody up. What I did was I opened up the door in our room that looks out, and all I saw was smoke. I saw flames, so I'm like, okay, we got to go. The fire chief says everyone was out when they arrived. They believe the fire started in an unoccupied unit and spread to the roof. A major focus, keeping the fire contained. These are old wooden buildings. This building behind us uh, is connected to another building by a couple of uh, bridges, and we're concerned about keeping it into the area of origin. That they were able to do. But for family Families like Chad McAlpine and Ashley Jero, it was an extremely stressful time, especially with an 18-month-old child. I put pajamas on, I had to pull them right out of the bed because all we heard was yelling, fire, fire. At this point, it's unclear how many units have been lost because of the fire, but the fire chief says they're going to work with the building's owner to make sure any disruption is minimal. In Hampton, Ray Brewer, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New in New Hampshire, O2 primary Burns accuses Hansel of running Sanctuary City as mayor of Keene. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. What does it take to be the best? It takes guts, grit. Second Congressional District Republican candidate Robert Burns is calling Keene a sanctuary city for undocumented immigrants, pointing to a 2017 resolution passed by the city council recommending city staff only cooperate with federal immigration officials when the law compels them to do so. He says his GOP primary opponent, Keene Mayor George Hansel, who voted against the resolution as a counselor, should be taking a stand. He's done nothing to reverse that. And then he's worked with the people who've made this a sanctuary. And Eli Rivera, who's the county sheriff, has made this entirely a sanctuary county. And I think that that's inappropriate. Hansel is largely sidestepping Burns' attack, saying there are more important issues in this primary race, like inflation and the high cost of energy. Keene is in a sanctuary city. I'm not sure exactly where that's coming from. Um, and frankly, I think all of that would just be a distraction from what I'm hearing from people, what my constituents are saying. And but Candidates will continue to fight about this one, but analysts say immigration remains a potent issue among New Hampshire Republicans. Yeah, I think Republicans very much look to this as a constitutional test. The, the, the purpose of government, the, the really the main purpose of government, they would argue, is to protect the borders. In Keene, Adam Sexton, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Judge denies abortion clinics request to block Mississippi's trigger law. Let's take a listen to that video right now. Whoa, sorry, you probably didn't catch all that. Well, as you can see, Fidium is fast. How fast? Two gig download and upload fast. But we know speed isn't everything. That's why we also offer whole home Wi-Fi connectivity, an easy-to-use app, and so much more. Plus, Fidium eliminates data caps, gimmicks, and hidden fees. Finally, there's internet that's flexible, friendlier, faster for you. Yeah, you. And whatever you do. Lawyers representing the state's only abortion clinic, the Jackson Women's Health Organization, just filed this lawsuit in Chancery Court to block the trigger law. Their argument is that banning the procedure would violate state law. Mississippi's abortion trigger law, which outlaws most abortions in the state, facing a legal challenge 10 days before it's due to take effect. Lawyers representing the Jackson Women's Health Organization filed a lawsuit in Hines County Chancery Court Monday. The lawsuit argues prohibiting abortion violates the state constitution. Abortions are not going to stop in the state of Mississippi. People are going to keep getting abortions. This shouldn't even be a question that abortion is unthinkable because the thought of murdering your unborn child. The 
lawsuit came hours after a spokesman for Attorney General Lynn Fitch said she signed a certification which says the state abortion trigger law takes effect July 7th, 10 days from Monday. I'll be here for the next 10 days delivering the message that God has heard the cries of the unborn. Today would be soon enough, but, I mean, obviously we've got to go with whatever the AG's office says. The new legal wrangling comes days after the U.S. Supreme Court upended 50 years of precedent and overruled Roe v. Wade. Under Mississippi's trigger law, the only exception to the abortion ban would be to preserve the life of the mother or if someone got pregnant after they were raped. The bad people have won. That's what I feel. The people who come here and protest, they're the worst people. Anticipating a permanent shutdown, clinic doctors are rushing to see as many patients as possible. After the landmark ruling came down Friday, the clinic owner told reporters in a Friday news conference they were already booked up with women coming from surrounding states in the southeast. We're not laying down. We're not giving up. Women have always had abortions, no matter what it took even if it was their life. And we're going to make sure that that's not on the line here. Tonight, the spokesman for Attorney General Fitch says we do not comment on pending litigation, but the Supreme Court was clear Friday, and we will fight to sustain that victory for Mississippi. We're still waiting to find out which chancery judge the case will be assigned to and how soon the first hearing will be scheduled. Tonight, we're live in downtown Jackson, Ross Adams, 16 WAPT News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. That does it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night and goodbye.